Hi everyone and welcome to Pro Tools Answers where three Pro Tools experts discuss, demonstrate and elaborate on your Pro Tools questions put to the community in Avid's official Facebook support forum. Uh, the indispensable Anders, Andy and Woo. myself Dave take you deep into the workings of Pro Tools technique and ethos to help you the user community understand and get the best out of their investment. We really do hope that our tutorials and discussions are helping you guys do just that. Um, in this episode, we're going to be covering a question from Prod by Dan, absolutely his real name, yeah. and he asks, how do I bounce my mix so that the effects such as reverb and delay are played out instead of the bounce cutting off at the end of the audio? And Great question, Prod by Dan. It's a good one, um, and yeah. Anders has the answer for us. Yeah, sure. Uh, so let me just uh, share my screen with all of you uh, over here. I've got this extremely uh, a simple session with just one track in it. It's the drum loop. And I've got a D-verb uh, directly as an insert on this. So I'll just play you the, uh, the, the session without any reverb. It sounds like this. And with a small amount of, of uh, reverb here, it will sound something like this. And as you can see here, there is a little bit of a reverb tail hanging over like the, the clip end here. And, uh, and I suspect that what you did, Dan, is uh, if you select the clip, uh, you are also making a timeline selection. And that timeline that's selection it. is what Pro Tools will bounce. That's so if they're linked though, right? <clears throat> if they're linked, that's yeah. right. I've got a, time, a link timeline and edit selection uh, uh, enabled here. Or if you make a timeline selection directly in, uh, in the ruler, mm. that's also a way to make a timeline selection. And in this case, if I bounce this right now, uh, Pro Tools will bounce exactly the length of my timeline selection, which will cause the reverb tail or any de delay tail to be cut off. Uh, so uh, there are a couple of ways that you can do this to, to not risk cutting off the reverb tail. And one would be to have no selection. Uh, if you have no selection, Pro Tools will play through the entire timeline and will continue bouncing the reverb tails and delays as well. Let me show you this. So I'm, um, I'm just pressing bounce mix here and uh, and I am importing the, the bounce directly so you can see the, the result here. So what Pro Tools will do now is bounce this little clip and I'll import the bounce track. And oh, uh, there you go. <laughs> That's uh, my, my 7-1. Uh, bounce here because that's and what that's what we need. We need beats in Dolby Atmos, don't we? Sorry about this. <laughs> yes, yeah, totally, exactly. totally wrong. I didn't check this, but as you can see here, <laughs> or or SDDS not, rather than not it Dolby. It did Atmos. not cut off the reverb tail, but it, it's like an excessive amount of reverb tail here as do, well. Do me a and favor is, and yeah. and let's let's zoom up on it because one of the things to keep in mind is that the metering in Pro Tools doesn't go all the way down to the bottom of the dynamic range of, of mm -hmm. audio. Mm -hmm. So yep. if we if we go ahead and bring this up, you can see here, is that is that the maximum that it'll go to? Yeah, that's the maximum, yeah. Can you can you throw some clip gain on there and see if there's any more? Yeah, so sure. Out? So this yeah, is so. maximum clip gain, and uh, it's hard to tell. Uh, yeah. So it, look, it looks like it drops to complete silence, and yeah. and then there's a little bit of a buffer after, mm. a little bit mm. of, yep. of dead space afterwards. But totally. But by the time it gets to there, it's complete. It's practically inaudible. Yeah, it's uh, totally inaudible. It's minus 144 decibels, so there will be no signal left at this point. Uh, mm -hmm. A couple of potential hazards of doing this, of course, is. Uh, some people that I know uh, are, when they are editing stuff in Pro Tools, they move stuff on the timeline to after their song mm -hmm. and like get rid of that and throw that to the side. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, of course, Pro Tools will yeah. bounce the entire length. So after two minutes of silence, you might have a loud guitar popping in or something. Well, that's where I keep so, my reference tracks all the way yeah, over that. And, so, I, and I get right. to them through markers. <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> so what should you do? So what's the best method? of doing this then? 
Well, for me, it's always use your ears. Um, yep. You know, I, I I throw a master fader on there so I can I can take a look at the levels, mm -hmm. and then when when I determine that that you know when when the sound has gotten below where I want it to be, yeah. um, I just you know hit the enter key, I drop a, a memory location there, and that's my bounce end. Period. Okay. And that's and I and then I make a selection between the bounce start memory mm -hmm. location, the bounce end memory location, and that's what I bounce. Okay, so so um, after creating that uh, location, uh, you could uh, basically just then do the bounce to that location, and uh, mm -hmm. and that's it. So so in this case, uh, up up to this point then. So of course, as Andy said here, it's the timeline selection that is the the section that Protos will bounce. So there was something else that you mentioned uh, during our setup, Anders, that was a kind of, it seemed to be a bit of a key qualifier for when Pro Tools would actually end the bounce that you haven't mentioned. You suggested that Pro Tools will stop bouncing when it uh, when the signal drops below 144? Yeah, yeah minus uh, 144. Minus 144, yeah, that's <coughs> correct. And uh, so you might run into some problems with certain plugins. Mm. Uh, if you have a plugin that is creating harmonic content, like uh, a distortion uh, pedal or, or amp simulation, or mm -hmm. even some, some compressors and stuff that are actually adding uh, tape, uh, tape noise. machines, desk emulators. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> yep. So those basically never get silent. So. Mm. so so you might run into some uh, small problems there as well. Well, so at that point, you're just leaving up to Pro Tools to determine when your bounce is going to end, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so so, so me personally, I'm doing exactly what Andy is doing. I'm always using my ear and setting the timeline selection uh, myself. So I'm not yeah. leaving that decision to Pro Tools. It, it's yeah. exactly it. It's a great it's a great technique. Sticking an out point with a marker and then sticking an in point at the beginning. And as Andy said, making a selection between the two because that bouncing operation is, it should really be selection dependent. It's not. And a lot of folks too um, will, you know, they won't have the music start at the beginning of their timeline, right? Mm, so, yeah. so, so what I'll do is, is I'll put a, a marker at the beginning of the bounce selection, you know, the bounce yeah. area. I put one at the end. And if you hold down, if you select the first bounce or the first marker, and you hold the shift key and select the the second marker, it will create a timeline selection. Okay, so let me uh, let me um, uh, show what Andy is uh, saying here. There are a couple of ways to do this, of course. Mm. Uh, so I'm using the memory locations window, which you can find in, in the Windows menu, of course. But holding, uh, clicking on the first one, which has, happens to be location two for me, mm -hmm. and then holding the shift key, clicking on the second one will create the selection between those two, two markers. Very cool. Could, could we move that on just one uh, one notch? So you've got a selection there, right? <clears throat> OK, um, go into memory location. Uh, press Enter to go into the memory location dialog to create a new memory location. Um, under um, time properties, instead of selecting it as a marker, um, yep. define the memory location as a selection, yep, and then name it mix. And then when you press OK, that will yep. give you a memory location that is the length of the bounce length of your mix. Yep. So whenever you're, yeah, so you're moving around your well. session and you want to come back to your mix length, you don't even need to do the, sh the shift click thing. Just yep. just yep. go straight to that memory location and it will give you your mix length, your mix selection. That's, That's really right. clever, David. Mm -hmm. That's the best uh, solution for you. Yeah, very cool. Um, so very easy to solution. Very great simple question. We haven't done a simple question forever, have right? we? I love that question. Great. So, so it's one so many people get wrong, though. So it's, mm -hmm. it's good that you ask it, and hopefully the answer helps. Yeah, I, I have many students that send me not, not just files that have really long tails to them, but also loads of space at the beginning of the, the thing as well. And it's, mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. good practice. I mean, it, it's very simple for somebody else at the, the next point in the chain to do that, that chopping up for you. You know, obviously they can do that, but it's nice to, to receive something that has been considered well considered, right? Exactly. Totally. Anyway, okay, uh, great, 
question prod by Dan. Hopefully that helped you and hopefully that helped a few other people as well. Um, if you enjoyed this, the slightly shorter format video uh, today, uh, hit uh, like on the video. Um, if you could subscribe to our YouTube channel and spread the word around as well, that's how we're, we're, we're getting about to other Pro Tools users these days. Uh, please do that and hit the bell icon. That'll notify you every time we upload a new video. Uh, if you head over to ProToolsAnswers.com, uh, you can subscribe over there and Andy will write to you every week as well and let you know uh, what's up. And if you fancy taking that next step, uh, you can click on join our inner circle, our own inner circle, uh, where there are benefits such as masterclasses like Anders is uh, is going to be running tomorrow. Um, uh, there's a we have a close community that that you can join, so you can we can discuss Pro Tools in a in a nice supportive um, and uh, noise free environment, um, and some some other things that go along with it. You can read all about that over at ProToolsAnswers.com. Um, have I missed anything, chaps? No, no, you did great. Awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying my best, Andy, as I You're do doing every well. week. Going well. Going on. Perfect, as always. <laughs> Thank you very much to Andy. You bet. Thank you very much to Anders. Thank you. My name's Dave. This is Pro Tools Answers. We'll see you next time, and we're out. <laughs>